In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make homemade Girl Scout Samoa's cookies. Hello adventurers, my name is Carly and welcome back to my channel, Adventures in Yum. Bring you delightfully delicious food videos that I hope will inspire you to go on your own food adventures. If you're new to my channel, I share recipes for mostly sweet treats, some savory eats, food reviews, and yes, cocktails too. If that sounds awesome to you, please consider subscribing. It's Girl Scout cookie season, so while you anxiously wait for your order, why not make some yourself? Samoas or Caramel Delights, depending on which baker makes them, are one of Girl Scout's most popular cookies. The combination of crunchy shortbread, toasted coconut, caramel, and chocolate is perfection. I've loved Girl Scout cookies for a long time because I used to sell them myself as a Girl Scout. While I don't sell them anymore, I am officially a lifetime member of the Girl Scouts. Let me know in the comments below, what's your favorite kind of Girl Scout cookie? Mine has always been Thin Mints, with Samoa's as a close second. <laughs> now, let's make these super yummy cookies. First, we're going to make the caramel because it needs to set for at least a few hours in the refrigerator. I show how to make my caramel in my Celebration Cake Part 1 video. You can find the link for that video in the description below. One change that I've made since uploading that video is that I no longer add water to the granulated sugar. I simply melt the sugar down, moving it around to make sure that it melts and caramelizes evenly. Once it achieves the lovely amber color, I finish making the caramel the same way I always do. Second, we're going to make the toasted coconut. Spread flake coconut onto a baking sheet lined with either parchment paper or aluminum foil that has been sprayed with non-stick cooking spray. Spread the coconut into a somewhat even layer across the pan. Then, bake at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for approximately 10 to 15 minutes or until completely toasted. Here, I baked about four to four and a half cups of coconut, so it took closer to 25 to 30 minutes to completely toast. Make sure to stir the coconut around the baking sheet periodically, about every five to 10 minutes to make sure that the coconut toasts more evenly and doesn't burn. Once it's all toasted, set it aside to cool. Third, we're making the shortbread. For my shortbread, I do not yet have my own personal recipe, so I actually use Martha Stewart's recipe. It always turns out well, I love the flavor, and it has been absolutely perfect for so many yummy food projects. I'll drop a link in the description below for the original video of Thomas Joseph making Martha Stewart's recipe. To start, we're going to sift two cups of all-purpose flour and one and a quarter teaspoons of salt into a large mixing bowl. Give it a quick whisk and set that aside. Next, we're going to add two sticks or one cup of room temperature unsalted butter to either the bowl of a stand mixer or a large mixing bowl. Then add three quarter cup powdered sugar. Cream the butter and sugar for about three to five minutes using either a stand mixer or a hand mixer. Or if you want a nice little arm workout, about 10 minutes mixing by hand. Make sure to scrape down the sides of the bowl. Now add the flour and salt mixture to the mixing bowl. Mix until everything is just combined. Overmixing will develop too much gluten in the flour and will result in a tough shortbread. Now, we're going to pour the dough onto a piece of parchment paper, combine it into one ball of dough in the center, place another piece of parchment paper on top, and roll the dough so it's about 1 8 inch thick. Place this on a baking sheet and into the refrigerator for about 20 to 30 minutes to harden. You want the dough to be nice and cold because cutting the cookies is not only easier, but it also results in cleaner cut edges. Once chilled, use either a Linzer cookie cutter, like the one I have here, or a larger cookie cutter about two inches in diameter and a smaller cookie cutter about one inch or less in diameter to cut the cookies. Combine the dough scraps into one ball of dough, re-roll it, chill it, and cut more cookies. Place the cookies on a parchment paper lined baking sheet. Poke some holes in the dough with a fork to ensure that they do not puff up at all and bake at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for approximately 40 to 45 minutes. I actually like to get a light toast on my shortbread for added flavor, so I bake mine for closer to 50 to 60 minutes. Once they're done, let them cool completely. Fourth, we're making the caramel and coconut layer. Take the full batch of caramel, which should be between one and a quarter and one and a half cups, and place it in a medium mixing bowl. If it's not room temperature, heat it in the microwave for approximately 15 to 30 seconds to soften it. You may need to heat it a couple of times. Then, add about three to three and a half cups of the toasted coconut to the caramel and thoroughly mix them together. Once the toasted coconut has been thoroughly mixed into the caramel, pour the mixture onto a piece of parchment paper, cover it with another piece of parchment paper, 
roll it until it's about 1 8 inch thick, place it on a sheet tray, and then place it in the freezer to harden. Once it's completely hardened, use the same cookie cutter or cookie cutters to cut the caramel and coconut mixture. Just like the cookie dough, take the scraps and re-roll them to cut more circles. Keep these circles in the freezer until they're ready to use because it's easier to remove them from the parchment paper when they are very cold. And finally, we're ready to put everything together. To a large microwave-safe mixing bowl, add about three cups of chocolate. Melt the chocolate in the microwave in short increments of 15 to 30 seconds at a time until completely melted. Here I'm using Ghirardelli dark chocolate melting wafers, but you could also use tempered chocolate, or possibly some thinned Wilton dark chocolate candy melts, or just regular melted chocolate. But this last option won't have that delightful little snap when you bite into it like the other options I mentioned. Once the chocolate's ready, place a cookie in the chocolate and make sure that it gets completely covered. Use a fork or other kitchen tool to pick up the cookie and then shake off the excess chocolate. Place it back on the parchment paper. I decided to do half of the cookies at a time to ensure that I had more room to work. Before the chocolate completely sets, place one of the caramel and coconut circles on top of the chocolate covered cookie. Gently press it onto the chocolate and make sure that it's flat. Repeat this process with the rest of the cookies. I like to do about four to six cookies at a time. Finally, we're going to add some of the melted chocolate to a piping bag and drizzle it over the top of the cookies. Once the chocolate sets, gently remove the excess chocolate. These cookies are meant not to be exactly like the original, but more a combination of a couple of my favorite recipes to pay homage to the classic cookie in the purple box. While regular Girl Scout Samoa's cookies are not completely covered in chocolate like these ones are, by doing that it actually keeps the cookie crispier and maintains that fabulous textural component. These homemade cookies are a delicious way to satisfy your craving for Girl Scout Samoa's cookies. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to hit that like button and click subscribe. You can find this recipe on my website, adventuresandyum.net. The link is in the description below. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time for another fun food adventure.